Hello, Alex from Barefaced Audio here, and this is Sound for Musicians, part five. We're continuing with the wave behavior of sound waves, and we're looking at reflection, which is one we've all heard, it's very obvious, and the one that, well, something that people discover as children is echoes. So echo is a very clear sound reflection. So it's got a long enough gap that you don't detect that it's part of the original wave, it separates out. But when sound comes from a sound source, let's say a loudspeaker, so this, this is looking from above, looking at a speaker in a room, red line here, that's our direct sound, yeah? But we've also got the sound that's coming off the speaker, off axis, that's reflecting off walls, and we've also got the omnidirectional output, so this is the low frequency output, and that's coming even right off the very back of the sound source, and it's bouncing around the room to us. So bear in mind that whenever you're hearing sound, unless you are in an anechoic chamber or standing on top of a very, very, very tall pillar in the middle of a very, very big empty field, you are always going to hear sound reflections as part of the sound. Unless they are a significantly delayed reflection, an echo, then you will not hear them as a reflection, you will hear them as part of the sound, but they are not part of the direct sound, they have joined the direct sound. Now, here we again have a speaker on the floor in a room, so here we're looking from the side, rather. so this is a side projection rather than an, an overhead, I can't remember what the technical term is, side elevation, plan view, anyway, speaker in a cabinet, generating sound, and again we've got the red line of the direct sound, but we've also got the off-axis sound bouncing off the floor, bouncing off the ceiling coming to you, and we've got the more omnidirectional output at, that tends to happen at low frequencies, unless it's a specifically omnidirectional speaker, of which they exist, we actually make some ourselves. Um, and that's reflecting off the back wall and maybe some multiple reflections. So sound very much does reflect. Now how it reflects will depend on what it's reflecting off. So if we've got, say, a uh, a marble wall, marble floor, something that's really hard, hard, shiny things cause pretty much perfect reflections. Um, but also we can have soft things which still do actually reflect, but they will reflect differently at different frequencies. It tends to be that as things become softer they reflect the higher frequencies less. So a room like this, this is, so this is our media room, studio, all sorts of things. If I, let's have a look at some of the things we've done here to help with sound. So we have various bits of these old curtains which also have material behind them on the wall. Around there, go around there, we've got cork which is um, very good at damping and reducing reflections at diff a wide range of frequencies. There's an old duvet behind that there. On the floor we have some surplus fake grass which is actually quite effective at absorbing sound and not reflecting sound so much. And then what used to be concrete walls everywhere are now covered in plasterboard green glue, which is an acoustic glue, plasterboard sandwiches, which therefore reduce reflections. When we originally moved into this room, you could barely have a conversation because there was such an overwhelming quantity of sound reflections and echoes that it became this horrible blur because it's a fairly box-like room. It's probably a similar. Yeah, the, the dimensions are quite similar. It's quite cube-like as much as a room can be cube-like. Um, and very hard surfaces, hard solid surfaces that reflected all the frequencies, even down to very low frequencies. So by adding in these materials that have softness at different frequencies, uh, different inherent resonances and things like that, it has given us actually really good acoustics in here, whilst also soundproofing it pretty well. Um, it's, it's as If anyone's ever done any soundproofing, you'll know it's very hard to make anything soundproof, but we have certainly significantly sound attenuated this room. So yes, because sound is a wave, it not only refracts, diffracts, it also reflects. So that's three of the key four characteristics of sound wave behaviour, and we'll do the next one, superposition and interference, next time. Thank you, I've been Alex from Barefaced, and we are demystifying the science of sound, especially for musicians. See you next time.